the rich Ukrainians, meanwhile, relax on luxury boats or cruise around in expensive cars. In March, a Ukrainian anti-corruption blogger published this picture, reportedly showing 28 million US dollars and 1.3 million euros in cash. The picture was taken by Hungarian customs officers when the wife of a Ukrainian parliamentarian crossed into the EU. It's unclear why Ukrainian customs officers didn't catch her smuggling the money. Maybe this money indicates something larger is afoot. In the summer, Ukrainian parliamentarian Igor Abramovich was spotted on Cap Farah. He left Ukraine's pro-Russia party before it was banned. And set up a network of Ukrainian parliamentarians abroad. Are Ukraine's old pro-Russian networks resurfacing in France? Igor Abramovich won't talk to Ukrainian. You're watching DW News live from Berlin. Uh, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz are holding a joint press conference here in Berlin. You are a frequent guest here and a guest that we like to welcome here. We yesterday had said that we had, uh, would have a very good uh, talk with uh, the Norwegian Prime Minister, and we uh, had that in the evening, and we continued with our talks today. The focus of our talks, and it goes without a question, is really about the conflict in Ukraine. And uh, together with our allies in NATO and the European Union, and far beyond the European Union, we support Ukraine, and we will continue to provide that support for as long as it is, it is needed, politically, financially, and also militarily. Russia may not be allowed to win this war. And it is also clear that NATO itself must not become a party to the conflict proper, because that could have unforeseeable consequences for the entire planet. The fact that Russia is trying to redraw the boundaries of countries in Europe has thrown into stark relief how important the transatlantic alliance is. NATO is and remains the central guarantor of our collective security. The NATO summit in Madrid in summer was an important milestone on the path towards orienting NATO towards the current and present risks and challenges that exist. We are developing the uh, planning for the armed forces and plan in the next years. We are also looking at critical infrastructure and ammunition storage and the build-up of ammunition. We do hope that uh, Sw Sweden and Finland will soon be welcomed as fully-fledged members of NATO. But it is also clear for us in Germany that our obligation towards NATO is an obligation towards any member and any threat arising to any region within this territory. Germany is already committed to the eastern flank, protection of the eastern flank of NATO, for example, by seconding 1,000 soldiers to Lithuania and also by sending hardware to protect Lithuania with the help of Eurofighters to protect the Baltic Sea airspace. The Federal Republic has actually mobilized and held, uh, prepared 40,000 soldiers this year for the rapid response forces of NATO. And next year it will be another 17 who uh, will then be part of the BGTF uh, NATO positioning. The Federal Armed Forces will continue to increase their strength. From 2025 on, we will be pro providing 30,000 
soldiers on high alert and high preparedness. In my speech in Prague, I spoke about the necessity and requirement for a sustainable protection of the European airspace. We have developed a strategy that has as a purpose the strengthening of that uh, objective, and I am very, very pleased that more than 15 other countries have joined our initiative. We spoke with the Secretary General also about the protection of critical infrastructure, in particular in the northern Baltic Sea region. The attacks on the Nord Stream 2 pipelines have shown, if need be, that our infrastructure needs protection. And together with our partners and allies, we want to become active in that field. Today and yesterday, in our conversation with the Norwegian Prime Minister, we agreed that this has to be coordinated in an international context and NATO has to be an integral part of this effort given the capacities that NATO has and the mission. Germany would uh, welcome a stronger coordinating role that for NATO on the high seas and NATO can play a pivotal role in coordinating the relevant uh, actors and creating and in creating a common space for the actions and also working with the coastal states. All of these tasks are dealt with within our alliance and I'm very, very grateful for this excellent cooperation that uh, is present at NATO and that you represent here. Thank you so much uh, for hosting me here. Thank you for the dinner yesterday. Thank you for the excellent meeting uh, today. Uh, and not least, thank you for your leadership and your personal commitment to our transatlantic bond to our NATO uh, alliance. Russia's illegal war in Ukraine continues to cause death and misery every day. As winter sets in, Russia is bombing Ukraine's energy infrastructure, trying to freeze and starve Ukrainians into submission. Putin is using winter as a weapon, and we cannot allow him to win. At this critical moment, our continued support for Ukraine is more important than ever. NATO is not party to the conflict. We will not be dragged into Putin's war. We stand by Ukraine in its right to self-defense, a right enshrined in the UN Charter. And I commend Germany for its leading role. Germany is among the allies providing most military, financial and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. Military equipment provided by Germany protects Ukrainian homes, schools and hospitals from Russian missile attacks. German arm deliveries save lives and NATO allies are determined to sustain our support so that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent state. We know that our support for Ukraine comes at the cost. Rising food and energy bills mean tough times for many. But we pay the price in money, while the Ukrainians pay in lives. And if Putin wins, that will embolden authoritarian leaders to use force again to achieve their goals. That would make the world more dangerous and all of us more vulnerable. So NATO's task is to support Ukraine and prevent escalation of the war beyond Ukraine. We do this by sending a clear message to Moscow that we will defend every ally. That is why we have uh, stepped up our presence in the eastern part of the alliance. Germany is leading NATO's battle group in Lithuania, providing air defenses in Slovakia and jets patrol our skies from the Baltic to the Black Sea. At this defining moment for European security, Germany's leadership is crucial. Der Olaf, your speech to the Bundestag in February was historic. It was truly a turning point. With the Seitenwende, 
Germany has stepped up like never before in support of Ukraine and in defense of your NATO allies. I strongly welcome your government's special 100 billion euro fund to invest in our shared security, providing funding for fifth generation aircraft, new helicopters, new ships, and many other critical capabilities. As you mentioned, we also discussed the protection of undersea infrastructure. Pipelines and cables on the seabed are arteries for our economies, transporting energy and transporting data. The recent sabotage of the North Stream pipelines has reminded us all of the vulnerabilities of this infrastructure. In response, NATO has doubled the number of ships patrolling the North and the Baltic Seas, and stepped up sharing of intelligence. But we need to do more to help protect this vital infrastructure. So I welcome the German-Norwegian initiative to establish a NATO undersea infrastructure center. Our vulnerabilities and help deter and recover from any disruptive actions against allied undersea infrastructure. Chancellor Scholz, De Rulof, thank you once again for your strong support and for your commitment to our alliance. Thank you so much. I have a question to the Patriot and the General Secretary. Patriot system for the Secretary General first. Please. You said that the individual NATO member states can decide themselves where their patriot systems are placed. The federal government has argued that it had, should be actually be coordinated within NATO because it is also part of the NATO air defense system. Therefore, I'd like to ask you exactly how was your statement meant? Is it uh, okay for NATO, for example, that patriot systems are placed in uh, Ukraine and Federal Chancellor, you said that the offer was made to Poland, but if the United States provide their consent, would the federal government, would you also be in agreement to place them the system in Ukraine? First of all, I would like to commend the Germany for offering uh, to increase the air defenses of Poland. This just shows the leading role and the many contributions Germany is making to uh, the, the defense of NATO allies. Uh, so this is uh, uh, yet another example of German leadership in our alliance and of your commitment to strengthen NATO deterrence and uh, defense. Uh, then uh, there is an ongoing dialogue and also a process in Poland, so I think it's in, uh, too early to uh, conclude. And I also think it is important to separate the, uh, the discussion about those three uh, patriots which uh, uh, Germany has offered to uh, help to protect Polish airspace from the issue of uh, um, more air defense to uh, Ukraine. We all agree uh, on the urgent need to help Ukraine, including with air defense uh, systems. Germany has uh, already delivered modern, um, important, uh, critical air defense systems to uh, Ukraine, not least with the IRST air defense systems. Uh, allies. Uh, are prepared to step up and provide even more air defense to Ukraine. But I also think it is important to understand that this is not only about delivering new systems, uh, but very much also about ensuring that the systems we have already delivered can operate. So there is a need for ammunition to existing systems. There is a need for uh, spare parts and maintenance. So I think that we should separate the issue of the three uh, 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 the offer of uh, supporting Poland with three Patriot batteries to the overall and, and much larger issue of ensuring that allies are providing air defense uh, to Ukraine. They have already done a lot. Germany are among, uh, or is among those nations. And, and there is a need also to ensure that the systems we have can function with sufficient ammunition, spare parts and maintenance. Our offer to Poland continues 
as stated, we are willing and ready to provide safety and security to Poland and uh, place the Patriot system there. And as the Secretary General said, uh, this is an ongoing debate and the question has not been fully answered yet. NATO Secretary General said it this morning at the uh, security conference and he restated it. Um, the uh, systems that are sent to Ukraine need sufficient ammunition. And in Germany right now, we have an ongoing debate uh, regarding a dearth of ammunition. The uh, Federal Minister for Defense has written a letter this morning to the Finance Ministry asking for more funds in order to purchase more ammunition. The answer has been there is enough money. So what about uh, procurement of ammunition in Germany? Thank you very much for the question, and I'll be very clear about this. In the last couple of decades, we uh, well, set the wrong orientation and the, the wrong tracks when it came to procurement of munitions. And now uh, it is really about ensuring a steady flow of uh, supply, not just because of the war in Ukraine, but also because of our own needs. And we are currently addressing um, these wrong developments of the last decades. It's obviously not something uh, that uh, is done within a very short period. It is also about creating a sustainable system where we have sufficient flow of ammunition for our weapon systems. And I can assure you that our minister is doing everything so that this is successful. And it will be successful. Ukraine needs more uh, ammunition, um, and, uh, uh, and that's obvious, and they have stated that many times, because this is a brutal war of attrition where there is a, a huge consumption of ammunition. And that's also the reason why allies are providing more ammunition to Ukraine. Uh, and they have provided a lot and continue to provide uh, uh, su substantial uh, amounts of ammunition to Ukraine. The way allies have done this is by uh, 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 digging into existing stocks. And of course, in the long run, uh, that cannot continue. So that's the reason why uh, Germany and other allies have also uh, started to engage with the defense industry to ramp up production of ammunition, uh, partly to replenish existing uh, NATO stocks uh, to meet the requirements for deterrence and defense of NATO territory, but partly also to ensure uh, that we can continue to deliver ammunition uh, to Ukraine. So I welcome uh, the, the work of Germany and the efforts of other allies uh, to uh, uh, ensure that production of ammunition is increased so we can both ensure NATO det deterrence and defense and at the same time uh, provide ammunition to, uh, to Ukraine. So that's uh, NATO Secretary General uh, Jens Stoltenberg uh, at the uh, podium uh, with uh, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz after their meeting uh, today in Berlin. Uh, Olaf Scholz uh, opened the, uh, the press conference, uh, making the point that NATO must not become a party to the conflict uh, in Ukraine. Uh, said he, they, he also said that he hoped to welcome uh, Finland and Sweden uh, into the NATO, uh, into NATO at some stage, and uh, talked about NATO perhaps coordinating actions on the high uh, on the high seas uh, in order to protect uh, critical uh, infrastructure. Uh, from the uh, Secretary General, um, uh, we heard uh, thanks to his uh, German host. Also made the point that uh, NATO is not a party to the uh, the conflict in Ukraine, uh, as has uh, been said today by the uh, the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, uh, and thanked uh, Germany uh, for its uh, playing its part in these uh, efforts, and said that German arms deliveries had saved lives. And let's get more on this from our political correspondent uh, Simon Young. Welcome, Simon. Uh, what stood out uh, for you uh, at this press conference? Well, I think uh, the uh, two men were, were keen just to reconfirm that Germany uh, stands uh, as a solid ally uh, within NATO. And uh, that was something that the Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg uh, repeated again and again. He, he picked up 
Olaf Scholz's word uh, from a speech back at the beginning of the war, uh, the German word Seitenwender, a sort of turning point, a real shift, an epochal shift, as it were, uh, in Germany's uh, stance when it comes to defence matters. It's been reticent uh, in recent decades, I think it's fair to say. Now there's a change. There's a promise of 100 billion euros uh, to be spent on uh, defence, uh, in particular on updating the German armed forces uh, equipment. And so one of the questions that's uh, behind this kind of meeting is, you know, how much of that money is there to be spent? Uh, Olaf Scholz says we're doing uh, what we can to improve our uh, defence capability and uh, we're going to get there, but it takes a little bit of time. Uh, the first uh, question um, after the two men had uh, finished uh, speaking was about uh, what appears to be an ongoing row between uh, Poland and Germany about these uh, Patriot air defence systems. Um, the Secretary General appeared to swerve the question um, and uh, Olaf Scholz uh, seemed to uh, say, well, this is still an ongoing uh, uh, discussion. Perhaps you could just outline for us what the problem is there, given that Ukraine has said time after time after time, what we want is more air defence systems. Yeah, well, uh, as the Secretary General said, it's important to distinguish two different things. Uh, the NATO allies have offered and have been delivering, in fact, uh, some air defence systems, uh, modern ones, to Ukraine. Uh, and uh, that there doesn't seem to be a lot of controversy about that. Uh, indeed, a lot of those systems have been very successfully used to shoot down uh, things like uh, drones that have been launched by the Russian side uh, against Ukraine. Now, uh, uh, more can be done, of course. But on the other hand, we also have an offer from Germany to uh, move some of its Patriot air de defence systems uh, into Poland to uh, give reassurance to the uh, Polish side and uh, protect their defence space. And as both leaders made clear, the Polish government is still considering that right. offer, hasn't made a decision yet. OK, uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, Simon Young, thank you uh, for now. It's uh, Simon Young, a political uh, correspondent uh, here in Berlin. Uh, you're watching uh, DW News live from Berlin. We'll have... Uh,